It's time for another Dice Tower review with the board game Knights. Oh, you guys aren't gonna believe the night I had. I saw myself, I was robbed, there was like a big shaggy dog looking thing, and someone trying to tell me about their weird visions. I, I don't know who I am anymore, and I can't sleep. That's what a werewolf would say. Let's get him. Hi, we're the Board Game Knights. I'm Aos James. I'm Jessica James. And I'm Sam Gillespie. And today we're reviewing One Night Ultimate Werewolf. In a game with One Night Ultimate Werewolf, there are two teams. There are the werewolves and there are the villagers. Some of these villagers will get special powers, but we'll get to that in a little bit. At the start, you'll take these roles and give them randomly to each player. And then three of them will be placed in the centre. So some roles will be removed from certain games, but you won't know which ones to make things a little bit more interesting. There is a narrator that's needed for the next bit. Unfortunately, there is an iPhone app narrated by Eric Summerer, so that you can, uh, you don't need to have a person sitting aside for, for a moderator, which is quite nice. So, at the start, we're, everyone will go to sleep, so we'll just go. Everyone, close your eyes. Werewolves, wake up and look for other werewolves. I am a werewolf. At this stage, I open up my eyes and scan around for the other werewolves. If no one else opens up their eyes, then obviously I am a lone werewolf, and one of the other werewolf cards is probably in the middle here. I know that now I am alone, and uh, back to sleep for me. Seer, wake up. You may look at another player's card, or two of the center cards. As a seer, I wake up, I get to either choose one of the other player's cards to look at, or two of the center cards, which is quite good because it lets me know that there is a werewolf set in the middle, and so I know that there is at least maybe a, one other werewolf in the middle, which can happen sometimes, or the other werewolf is among us. Robber, wake up. You may exchange your card with another player's card, and then view your new card. At this point, the robber would normally wake up. However, I'm not the robber. The robber is in the center here. So that would mean that in this particular case, there'll be a bit of dead air as nothing happens. And it all, because this is narrated every single time, you're never entirely sure if there is a robber that's doing something at that point, which is very important. Troublemaker, wake up. You may exchange cards between two other players. I am, however, the troublemaker. And this one gives me the ability to swap two other players tokens, and then I get to go back to sleep. I don't know what roles they were, all I know is I've caused a bit of mischief in the current game state. Insomniac, wake up and look at your card. Now as the Insomniac, I've got a very interesting role to play in this game. As I then look at the card that I have, which might have been swapped around, in which case it was. Now I'm the only person at the table who knows for certain what they are, and then I go back to sleep. In a moment, there will be a 10 minute discussion, full of lies and deceit, after which everyone points to a player. The player receiving the most votes dies. If it is a villager, the werewolves win. If it is a werewolf, the villagers win. If it is a tie, all tied players die, and as long as at least one werewolf dies, the villagers win. Otherwise, the werewolves win. And everybody then wakes up. You, you guys go ahead, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go back to sleep now. Yeah. Uh, Alright, okay. so and now at this point we have to work out what happened during the night phase and no one in this game has perfect information. The troublemaker caused a bit of mischief but they don't know who was what. And that can also force people to give out information they probably wouldn't have. So some people might want to lie about being the troublemaker to see if the... They... It's also important to make sure that you don't give out your information too early or too late. Exactly, so... Yeah, that's right. You could be holding off on some information and someone brings up information which then makes you appear to be lying in view of what they have just said. And also, since the werewolves know who the other one is, they can work together to try and create a convincing narrative. Mm. Or was. Or was, because the troublemaker can swap the identities. If I had instead of swapped Jess and Aos, Jess would now be the werewolf. Because one key thing about this game is you don't get to look at what your new identity is. You have to keep bluffing as though you were that character, that, unless you're given information that you've changed. Mm. At that point, you might be more willing to give up information. Since Aos is now on the villagers team, he'd be happy to say that he was the werewolf. But I could be lying about being the troublemaker, so then there's this internal circle of trying to work out what's going on, and it can get pretty confusing. It can, and there's many lies that get thrown around. It's very good. It's great. 
You guys are too loud. All right, so I think we need to vote on someone. Mm. I have a feeling it might be Aos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's Kristoff. Kristoff has a beard. Mm. It, it's obviously Aos. But he does have a beard. Oh, he does. Three, two, one. <sighs> Grab your pitchforks! One Night Ultimate Werewolf is uh, evolved from the original game, which is just Werewolf, which is an open source game. And uh, it was... Oh, when did that come about? Oh, it's, it's an ancient game from like the 60s or even even before that, I think. It's, it's, a, it's a great game with multiple people. Mm. But it's, it's especially like, for large numbers, especially if you've got a large group of people with different... Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. And it's sort of mutated over the years, added more roles, changed the dynamics of it all. Yeah. And um, there was the... Uh, just Ultimate Werewolf, which was released before this, I think. Yeah, so after it had done that, Ted Ausbuck, who's um, done One Night Ultimate Werewolf, mm -hmm. has released Ultimate Werewolf, which is evolution from normal Werewolf, Ultimate yep. Werewolf, and he's added artifacts and a whole deal of expansions to that and made it just fill, fill the whole game out. And then yep. it, it's evolved to this, which in my opinion is the best one. It's a standard game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just such a great improvement because you remove a lot of the nonsense that sometimes ends up in a regular game of Werewolf where one player gets eliminated at the very start before yeah. the game even begins. With which, no evidence against them. And it's often usually the person that's played the game the most, so they might enjoy it the game the most and then they get kicked out. Oh, that was great. That was a great game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, so there is that problem in the regular Werewolf version. Um, this one gets rid of that, but there's no player elimination whatsoever. Yeah. There's also like all the additional extra roles that you've got, which are which make it more interesting. Things like the tenor, where they're the only ones that win if they die. Yes. So they're trying to die. So you've got one person that could be pretending to be a werewolf or pretending to be sus. Exactly. To die. To try. Yeah, and yeah. that's and like the roles that we showed earlier are just some of them. You can add yeah. in more roles with different yeah. goals and out, different abilities. In, yeah. Take them out, put them in. Do whatever you want for it, and. It really works for the different player numbers. Mm. Yeah, so the max player numbers in this one is from 3 to 10. Uh, there's 16 cards, and I think at most you'll be using 13 of the cards. At most. So three of them aren't, aren't going to be used. So they'll be mixed up based yeah. on what player types that you have. Ex ex and I, I think one of the things for the original iterations of Werewolf was maybe too many players and too many roles. It got quite convoluted. Yes, it did. It very much did so. And um, in this one, there's different roles that work well for different player numbers. Yeah. There are some that are really designed for the 8-9 player games, 10 players games. Otherwise, they just get a bit... Um, they're, they're a bit too powerful and sort of like the two yeah. or three player we ones. We do personally four, recommend four that ones. you guys definitely have, when you start getting to really big numbers, definitely have a couple of villagers in there. Because that way it's just an easy life for the werewolves to be able to go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm totally a villager. Yeah, you know? for, for the yeah. fewer player numbers, a werewolf can be more willing to make a lie because there's a good chance that it'll be in the middle. Yeah. When it's a 10 player game, your chances become very, very minimal. Yeah. Especially if there's a, a, a villager or two in the center. Um, yeah. Often it, you'll have people, sorry, pretending to go, oh yeah, I'm the seer, but they'll, sorry, they'll, they'll actually be the seer and they'll be like, I'm not going to say what I am, I want to see if a werewolf says they're a seer first. Yes. You know, yeah. that's why the big numbers, you need the villagers. But without, yeah, without the villagers, then everybody in the game should have knowledge to contribute. And if you don't, it's seem extremely suspicious because generally it's only the werewolves that really want to lie. And they can't lie too much because someone else will have the role that should know something. Whereas mm -hmm. if they say, I'm a, I'm a villager, I know nothing, they're like, hmm, oh, it's a valid story. Yeah, we yeah. had one situation where I was like, there's a 50-50 chance that either of these two guys could be a werewolf or it was Kristoff that was going to be a werewolf. Yeah. And it was just like, so either one of them's lying and we can't tell who. Yeah. So, you know, you've got all those sorts of juicy things, it's great. A common criticism that I often have with a lot of Hidden Rolls games is they get to that point where you've played with most of the things um, so much that mm. you get, get familiar with it, they, the lies start to become the same and familiar. In this one, that solves it just by changing the rules around. If there's a lot of cases where it's a 50-50 um, shot at trying to work out who's the, uh, the werewolf, you add in a tanner so that they have to go, let's go 100% for one person or another. Yeah. So you can bring in roles or remove roles accordingly, which is I really I remember nice. at the beginning we didn't have, because it's a great beginner game, but at the beginning we didn't have the doppelganger just because it was so confusing. Yes. But yes. when we did bring it in, that created a lot of chaos and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> exactly. We so, had yeah, robbers stealing themselves and yes. things like that. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but with, yeah, and with the roles and the discussion time, so you've got 10 minutes base discussion time, which um, you guys have played it more than me. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, 10 minutes, um, for a 10 player game, 10 minutes, it's not enough time because everyone's still having that discussion and that, that player order and that accusation stuff is really important with 10 players. So in the 10 player game, that's, that's about the right time. Yeah. When that player, that number drops to about 3 or 4 or 5 players, that becomes way too much time because in those ones you want to sort of 
yeah. the werewolves want to be able to make a lie yeah. and then force people to make decisions yeah. very soon yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Otherwise, the people are just going to sit there and go, okay, let's keep... The, the let's stress keep. starts yeah. to build as you start yeah. getting the lies closer to getting, the end. Yeah. And, and the lies are harder to upkeep. Like, you have yeah. a great lie straight up and everyone's like, oh, it's believable. All good. Oh, wait, no, but if this, if this... Yeah. Right, mm. Mm, mm. So, um, yeah. I think you were saying like around the minute a player. A minute a player I find works, works very well. Mm. Um, yes. And we highly recommend getting the app for this game. It's a fantastic little app. Um, it's free to download on, I think it's both Android and iOS devices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Eric Samurai, of course. Yeah. Uh, and it just means that you don't have to have one player sitting out. But it is a bit silent on some phones, so you either need to get a speaker with it or play in a silent room, which probably isn't going to happen at most board game nights. Yeah, mm. but it is a big game, so you'll often find that mostly everyone will be in it unless someone else is playing some sort of quieter game, hopefully on the side. But I do have to make a special mention towards the artists of this game. The the picture is absolutely beautiful. It was Gus Batts who did it. He's a Brazilian artist, and mm. he's just the, each of the pictures that just They're got just, so much character in them. But it's they great. portray the um, complexity <laughs> the of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a bit of chaotic, just, light fun, but it's got psychological depth. Oh yeah, mm. and it's just it's great fun. Would highly recommend this one. Yeah. yeah. And I'd I'd say probably in conclusion on the back of the box. Uh, it mentions it right at the top, no moderator, no elimination, highly addictive, 10 minute game that keeps you coming back for more, and that's very accurate. Mm. So we'll just uh, finish with our final scores and imp impressions. I think this is an excellent hit and rolls game that you won't be disappointed by. Uh, no matter how many times you play it, there's always something to, to enjoy here. Eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, I'm giving it an eight. I like that they put uh, three to ten players on there. They didn't lie and say, look, this is for one to twenty. It's one of the best beginner games, and I give it an eight out of ten. It's definitely a stand-up game. So... Mm. One night stand? Oh. Oh, all right. No, no, one night stand. Oh, okay. Oh. That was a terrible joke. We hope you've enjoyed our review of One Night Ultimate Werewolf. We're the Board Game Knights, and we'll see you here next time on the Dice Tower. And cut. That was a great take, guys. That's what a werewolf would say! Oh, come on! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.